opera today for most people is a synonym for a, an elitist kind of art, a kind of social event for rich people. We're in an opera house today. <laughs> a boring old-fashioned show which one attends out of convention. Uh, where one falls asleep. I hope you don't fall asleep today. But when I tell people about my, my job, usually their reaction is, oh, this is too expensive for me, or I wouldn't understand because I'm not a specialist, or there's a form of social censorship around opera, which I find very strange for many reasons. Um, first of all, with other art forms, people don't feel that they need to be a specialist. Most people go to museums without having a PhD in art history. Most people read books without having a, de a degree in literature. They just enjoy it. And opera for centuries were, was the form of popular, popular form of entertainment. It was to audiences pretty much what cinema is today. Uh, just like cinema, it appealed to very uh, uh, different layers of the population. It had it big block, its big blockbusters, and it got pe people very excited and completely, completely passionate. And opera actually still has that potential of being a very popular art form, unlike what people seem to think. It's not a very intellectual form of art. It, it's, it's a total work of art. It appeals to your guts um, as much as to your brain, at least as much as to your brain. And there's nothing one needs to know to appreciate opera. All you need is eyes and ears and to be ready to listen and let yourself be swept away. And every, actually, almost every time non-specialists see our shows, they, they're, they're surprised and they come to us and say, oh, I didn't know opera could be like this. So for me, the challenge as a director is to keep opera alive and to make it relevant to people today. And the way to do that is to touch people and to be able to reach them, to reach their emotions and their souls. And this is only possible because opera touches me deeply. So my work has a lot to do with introspection. And this is what I want to talk about today, how I look into myself in order to convey my love of opera to the others. Um, my job as a director is Opera is special compared to other entertaining uh, performing arts because you almost only play pieces that have existed for centuries. So in your audience, many people have seen the piece already, many people know the story. So for a director, what is my job? The question is, how do you make performing art that is alive out of material which isn't? You have to reinvent the piece. And by reinventing, I don't mean necessarily modernizing. The question is, you know, sometimes it means modern costumes, but the question of uh, costumes or period transpositions are superficial, superficial questions. They're not an end. It's just a means to make a story clear if you need it. When I say you have to reinvent the piece, I mean you have to be inside the piece. You have to see what it does to you. You have to make it your own, and you have to try and convey that to other people. And what is wonderful about opera is that as a director, you have double material at your disposal. You have the words and you have the music. Now, in real life, people don't sing, I mean, except some of you under your shower maybe, but there's something fundamentally abstract and unrealistic about opera, but that's also what's so wonderful about opera, because art in general is not about realism. Art is about finding a stylized form, a stylized language to talk about life. And in theater, sometimes in cinema, perhaps you run the risk of wanting to be realistic, but in opera, you're fundamentally free of that concern. For instance, in Handel, which I'm doing now, you have a very abstract form which is called the da capo aria. It means the action stops, the character stops and sings an aria, uh, which is almost always in three parts, part A, part B, and then part A again. And in each part, the same sentence gets repeated over and over again. Sounds boring, doesn't it? Um, for example, in the first aria of Agrippina, which I'm doing right now, her young son, uh, Nerone Nero, tells her, Mother, thanks to your wise advice, I will become the emperor. And he repeats this sentence over and over again, like 12 times. But you can express that one sentence. You can use it to express thousands of nuances. Does he want to be an emperor? Is he terrified by his mother? Is he trying to convince himself? Is he trying to convince her? Is he addressing her directly? Is he talking to himself? Is she listening? Is she ignoring him? Does she believe in him when he says he wants to be an emperor? So the same sentence can mean a variety of things, and you just have to explore all the possibilities of what one simple sentence can mean within one situation. That's what we call the subtext. Um, you can say that, that there are two sides to my work. The analytical side, reading material, gathering information, what I call doing the homework. This I'm not going to talk about today. But there is another aspect next to the more intellectual side of my job. It's the immediate instinctive connection with the music. 
The music is the material that helps me as a director directly communicate with my characters or feel the situations from the inside. The characters sing a text, words, but often the truth of what they sing is in the music itself. Sometimes the music tells the opposite of what the words say, sometimes, I mean, just like in real life, your mouth says one thing, but your body language expresses another thing. And sometimes the music gives extra nuances to the text, sometimes it goes further than the text, it makes it more intense. So when I prepare a scene, I listen to the music over and over again. Actually, sometimes I even like to forget about the words, the text, and just feel what the music does to me. And for each piece, there are some numbers, some pieces that I become completely obsessed with, and I listen to them on repeat mode, and as I'm cooking or walking or uh, ironing, <laughs> and until the music is a part of me. And for reasons that I ignore, it moves me sometimes to tears. And this is exactly what I work with, what images the music conjures up what emotions it triggers, and um, um, trying to feel the music within me as if it were the expression of my own soul. That, that's my goal when I prepare a, an opera. So my directing work is a permanent sailing back and forth between the text and the subtext given, the text, uh, given by the music. So, of course, telling the story of an opera, as simple as that may seem, will always be through the prism of my perception of the music, of who I am and what stage of my life I'm in at that particular moment. And, and a production is always the meeting point of a piece and a person, the director and the team and the singers and the conductor and outside circumstances. And this is what reinterpreting a work means. Not actively looking for something different, not desperately trying to be original. This, if you're honest in your approach to the piece, happens by itself. Um, because each one of us is different. So by definition, the way I understand a work is original and the way you will perceive it is original too. Um, one concrete example, for instance, and a very simple one, I'm a woman. Many stage directors are men, many conductors are men, and almost all composers and librettists of the classic repertoire, opera repertoire, were men. Yet, most of um, opera heroes are heroines <laughs> and often victims. So how does it affect a piece if I, as a woman, suddenly show it through my prism? A simple example, when I did a production of Werther, in Act Three, Werther comes back to Charlotte, whom he used to love, who he still loves, and she's now married. And in our production, in our mise-en-scène, when he came back, she was pregnant. Now, nothing in the libretto she says she's pregnant, nothing says she isn't, and we'd be very logical for a young bride to be pregnant, but the way in our production the bel her belly affected the scene was very powerful. All of a sudden, his shock and her embarrassment were very strong, and the fact that their story is completely impossible was obvious, and then his death in the arms of a pregnant woman carrying life was all the more poignant. So perhaps it was a woman's idea, but it definitely made you feel with the character in a new way and it shed a new light and gave a new truth to the characters and the situations. So, but beyond certain connections I may have with the female characters of the piece, I think our job as a director is to be all the characters, even the men, <laughs> even the baddies, even the traitors, to be inside them, to adopt their logic, to feel with them, to understand what's m what makes them human, to feel their motivations from the inside. So this job, my job as a, uh, a director, is amazing because it enables you to live a thousand lives you literally project yourself onto different people. This season, for instance, I'll be directing four new operas, and so I will be inside maybe, what, 50 different characters, um, and living with them, and feeling with them, and suffering with them. So in a way, at the core of my job, there is introspection, asking myself who I am, but also who I could be, confronting myself with other possible me's, and thus defining who I am. And my work is a constant back and forth. My understanding of the world and my life experience feed my work with the singers, but being inside the characters and the singers and the, uh, feeds my understanding of the world. And this introspection is closely linked for me with empathy. Introspection is not just a way of thinking about myself, it's a way of understanding other human beings, of apprehending the world around me, of communicating through my work with audiences, and hopefully triggering introspection within them. Each one of them will understand the show differently, and all interpretations are right. There's nothing I like better than when people come to me after a show and say, tell me things about my own show which I had never seen before. There's no truth about a piece, and there is no truth about the interpretation of a piece. The only truth is in the, honest, in the, the honesty of your approach to the piece, as a director, but also as a member of the audience. So how you let it reson resonate within you and let it affect you, and how it makes you understand more about yourself and about the world. <laughs>